One thing they say about David, um, diplomat, you're a peacemaker, <laughs> mm. uh, a fence mender, an engager. They say you're a great guy, quiet mm. and sometimes a little diffident. Um, and these are all words I've seen in referring yeah. to you. And then we've got Telstra, big, hairy, monolith, slow. We're hearing things about internal rivalries. Entrepreneurial, exciting, innovative. <laughs> <laughs> My question to you is, what's a nice guy like you doing in a job like this? Yeah. Well, thanks, Norelle. That's really kind of you to ask. It's, uh, I love it. I really do. It's, uh, I suppose that's what gets me out of bed every morning. It's, uh, it's such a, a wonderful Australian company, and it's got such a wonderful history, and, uh, and such a... I, I'm continually challenged, and, and but motivated by what it can be and continues to be, and that gets me going. I'm a, a person who is uh, incredibly committed to results. Mm. I mean, I, irrespective of the nice guy you know, persona, which I think is a bit too simplistic. Uh, so what, driven... what's the real you in terms of, of your style, your leadership style? Well, there'd be two things. I mean, one would be I'm very driven to deliver. I mean, I suppose that's an ambition and a, and a, a commitment to get things done, but also I enjoy people. I, I've always uh, you know, enjoyed working with people to get the job done. And, uh, and I do believe in business. You've got to have a good product and various things, but you need good people and you need to be able to work with them. And mm -hmm. so that'd be the two aspects of who I think I am. Now, the challenge is how do you make that in a realm of a high-tech industry, fast-moving, more competition, mm -hmm. Not, not the sense of entitlement, but one of you got to be, you know, really uh, where customers are at, really oriented to the customer, and, and also, you know, dealing with very complex technology. That's the transition we've got to go through, uh, and that is difficult, mm. very difficult. You've got to create a culture where, the, where it's, it's okay to tell the truth, uh, and good and bad. And because unless you get that culture and greater transparency, you can't fix issues. I think by starting with that transparency, you create a culture that says it's okay to do it. Now, mm -hmm. it's not to be us and them. It's about us together to fix the real issues. And I think if Telstra can get that right, I think it's got a really good future. Mm. Yeah. How do you win back that trust? Well, it's an interesting one you say that because um, the, I, I, look, it is an important uh, aspect, but I don't think about it like that. I think about you, you do your hard work and you determine what you've got to do to get the business where it needs to go. And uh, in a way, once you get to that and you agree that with the board, you've got to be resolute in executing against mm -hmm. that. And I think for Telstra, there, I mean, there's, there's a number of factors playing out. One is, yes, the regulatory uncertainty. But yes, with us going through a major change and there is execution risk. I feel it. Everyone feels it. But that shouldn't stop you doing it. And uh, in fact, that's what the business is about. You've mm. got to take risks to get something done. And you've got to believe in it. Mm. And if you believe in it, then you get on with it. So, uh, and yes, then you've got to get results, like all of us. And uh, that is the tough side. If you don't get results, well, then okay. it's going to be tough. Uh, when you think about you know, what the home is going to be like in you know, five years' time, digital media. Uh, we've just released the IPTV, wonderful product, which is uh, you know, it's going to revolutionise the way we are entertained because it's interactive, video on demand. You've got to be different uh, and you've got to overlay that wonderful cultural heritage with something new. You've got to get down and fix process issues mm. because we're all the goodwill in the world. Unless you get down and do that, it, you will not see change. Mm. So you've got to get to root cause and it's tough. It's not, um, it's not easy because it's You've got to be disciplined and rigorous. You've got to have attitudinal change. But this is the, not the uh, exciting side of management. This is really tough. Very satisfying, by the way, when you do it well. Incredibly satisfying. But um, it's not glamorous. So how do you now start to focus for how you compete when you've got a government-owned um, MBN kind of monopoly looking after all of that? Well, the, the remember, home. it's going to take Everyone's eight to, to ten years to build. Mm. So that's, uh, but so but presumably I, a bit beyond your tenure is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that could be good or bad. I'm not sure. The, um, <laughs> but but that actually doesn't in, impact how the change we're putting in the company now. Mm. In fact, um, it's uh, 
we're not, I mean, whether NBN happens or not, I'm, we're now at a position, if it happens, I feel comfortable we've got some to take to shareholders. If it doesn't happen, we've got another plan to go. So we're in that, in, finally in a situation where we just get on with life, mm -hmm. and that's what we're doing. And the other and plan the, to go is? Well, I mean, it, and there's different versions. If the NBN didn't happen, mm -hmm. then we've got other options with technology, as mm -hmm. do others in the industry. Uh, or if it was to go ahead without Telstra, we got other options to do as well. So, and I mean the 11 billion NPV post tax is all that I can take to shareholders. Uh, anyway, you people want to yell at me, they can tell me what, you know, yeah. but I can't take anything else to shareholders because they're going to say, hey, hang on, this asset is worth this amount of money and we've got to be compensated for it. And so it's actually quite binary to be honest. Yeah.